Uh, hi everyone, um, my name is Jack Kiernan. Uh, today we're going to talk about accelerating application development with PyKX. Um, and so to begin with, I suppose, for people who don't know, what, what is PyKX? Um, well, it's, it's not um, just Q emulating Python and limiting you to uh, the Python libraries you might want to import, or it's not just another uh, Python Q interface. Um, it's a Pythonic first approach to uh, actually truly integrating Python and Q rather than just interfacing. Um, and so it has a couple of key tenants, I suppose. It tries to maintain the functionality and performance uh, of Q um, and expose your kind of KDB estates uh, to a whole host of people, your community data scientists, you know, your Python developer, your SQL developer. Um, and through that, it also can uh, turbocharge your existing uh, Python landscapes with a truly embedded uh, version of Q. Um, so just some of the basics. Um, you can import PyKX. You can see down at the bottom you can ignore the rest of everything. Uh, you import PyKX like you would any uh, Python library uh, you know and love to get yourself up and running. Um, and so PyKX doesn't limit uh, any of your Q functionality. So you can run um, you can run Q directly under Python using PyKX. So this is obviously in a Jupyter slide show. Um, but there's a Jupyter Notebook, there's a Python 3 kernel. Um, and what PyKX does is enforces a class-based hierarchical type system on the Q type system. And then from the base class Q, you can see there, I can access Q directly. Uh, when calling a PyKX instance, you actually create a, a um, PyKX object, uh, which is a wrapper around uh, an object within Q's memory space. So these are really cheap to make. You can see here, I've just got a, a table here which creates my PyKX object. Um, they're really cheap to make. They don't require a copy out of Q's memory space. Uh, and you can actually do Python functionality and Python features directly on them. Uh, so like slicing, iterating, uh, that sort of stuff. Um, you can also, within uh, PyKX, because this is Q embedded within, within Python, uh, truly embedded, I can load a, uh, a HTTP in here, a historical database, directly into my Python process. And then I can query it directly. You can see here I can run my uh, select statement. So you know, essentially what you can do is you, you can replace your Pythonic data sources in your, in your Python workloads. You know, you don't, it doesn't have to be Parquet now. You can directly bolt on KDB into your Python workloads, uh, which is, I think, a really cool feature. You can now have a, basically a Python HDB, as it was, uh, process sitting on top of, on top of, uh, on top of uh, Q. Um, you, we've also, uh, you can also, sorry, um, you can write in Python, um, because this is a, a Pythonic process, so I can define a couple of functions here, and I can set them then back in Q's memory space or within PyKX. So I don't know why you might do this, but you, you can um, in this example. Um, we've also implemented a magic command, um, which is really nice. Um, so for people who want to just don't have to use the, that base class Q, they can just simply use the, the, the Q magic command um, uh, and access Q directly. So that makes Jupyter Notebooks really accessible as well to, to anyone. Um, so any of you know any quants out there who just want to start up their regular Python kernel can do so. There's no you know, Jupyter Q kernel necessary. They just start up a Python kernel and then can access Q directly from it. So you know, a really nice ID to, you know, development environment as well. So you know, can speed up your, your uh, you know, development time there as well. Um, so, uh, you know, a critical feature of, um, of PyKX is the shared memory space between Q and Python. Um, and so um, we can easily convert data between Q and Python and Python and Q. In this example, I have a PyKX flow vector, a million floats, I think. Um, and I can do a zero copy conversion to NumPy. So you can see there 14 microseconds, basically instantaneous. So um, essentially, all it's doing is defining the Python object by uh, referring to a pointer in Q's memory space. So it's really fast. Um, all, all pykx.k objects, um, or uh, those in their subclass, uh, support uh, uh, several different methods of conversion, whether that's a Python native type, uh, NumPy conversion, uh, pandas, or PyArrow. So there's just a couple examples of those. Um, 
Again, those would be zero copy where possible. And then we can do the reverse. So we can go from uh, Python into Q. So here I'm converting that NumPy array uh, back to that flow vector. So it uh, can seamlessly transition between Q and Python and Python and Q again uh, very quickly. Um, so IPC is obviously a critical thing. I kind of, at the start, alluded to um, QPython. So PyKX essentially replaces QPython in that it's um, uh, significantly more performant. We've seen performance from clients uh, in the range of five to 10 times faster, depending on the use case. Um, so that's, that's really good. It's also much more feature rich. Um, and here, just some examples of running uh, synchronous remote execution. So using uh, KX sync uh, Q connection here to run my Q code. And I'm doing an async remote execution as well uh, in the below example. Also, I could have put in another example here, but the um, uh, QMagic also allows for remote execution. So you can, in the QMagic command at the very top, you can specify your, your port and everything you would it, generally with a, a H open or whatever. Um, so that's supported in QMagic as well. Um, and the so if I want to make a connection, you know, using uh, Q connection to uh, KDB, KDB Insights, so this is actually connecting directly to Ian's demo. Um, so you see here, I make a Q connection, and this IPC interface um, is actually different again to Q Python or other KX IPC interfaces, whether that's C Sharp or like Java, where the client library instantly codes um, the, ser the serialized data into the um, into um, that type. So in QPython, it'll be you know, a Q table into a pandas data frame, where with this IBC interface, uh, the conversion is actually deferred. So it's received into the, into the Python process as a PyKX uh, object. Um, so then you can, you can defer the conversion, use the zero copy conversion. So it, that's where a lot of the performance gain comes from uh, the existing QPython interface. Also to note, you know, PyKX is directly supported by KX, unlike uh, interfaces of the past. Um, so once we've got um, the uh, data from our KDB um, Insights uh, gateway. Uh, as I pull there, there's different ways within PyKX that we can interrogate the data. So we can use ANSI SQL. So we've got uh, an ANSI SQL client SQL interface that's available through uh, KDB Insights, but also available within PyKX. Uh, so you can see here, um, I can run uh, my SQL command. We've also exposed um, some functionality that's kind of cumbersome or not possible to do within SQL, like XBAR, so you can run functionality. So you know anyone now can you know straight out of college could just spin up a Python process, get access to your you know your KDB estate, run a SQL command, get the data, be able to convert it to Python. You can see PD there, uh, very performant. Uh, for those who are a little bit more uh, inquisitive or you know uh, want to learn Q or as a as a, an entry point to learning Q, we've also implemented a um, uh, a QSQL API. Uh, there's a full doc string to go uh, go with this to explain uh, the functions. You obviously can do select, exec, delete. And you can run keywords like insert uh, and everything as well. Um, so uh, it's also you can see a very a very Pythonic syntax. The where clause there is a, a list. The, the columns is a, a dictionary, a Pythonic dictionary. And so here I'm just doing an example. It takes. Um, Less than a less than a millisecond within Q. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to convert it to a data frame, and then try do the same thing in in um, in pandas. I'm no Python developer. I think this is right. I've got this off a, a colleague of mine, but you can see there it's significantly slower in, in pandas. Um, so you know you can do things much quicker using the QSQL API. Obviously, for a certain functionality, I don't have to tell the Q heads in the room uh, that. Um, We've also implemented a pandas API. Um, so um, that basically re you can directly, so pandas functionality that you would do on a data frame, you can do on the PyKX objects. You don't even need to convert it. So there, we've got some examples of, of metadata, um, pandas API-like functionality here. So I could get the columns, the shape, uh, the data types from my table. Um, in this example, we have some indexing. So I'm just going to convert that uh, data frame to, or that table, that PyKX object to a data frame. And then I'm going to run a uh, indexing lookup uh, using pandas. Um, and then 
we can basically uh, use our pandas like API to, so here's my uh, PyKX uh, table, and I can run, you can see here, all I've done is replace uh, data frame with tab and run the exact same line of code. So you can really, you can just basically replace, take out pandas, replace it, or whatever your data source is, and replace that uh, with Q and turbocharge your, your Python, Python landscape. So we've seen actually performance in, uh, the range of about 30 times more performant uh, using this, uh, using some of these examples. Um, shameless plug for our Montauk KXCon event, uh, our head of, our VP of data science uh, and technical lead from PyKX will be presenting the latest upgrades on uh, this um, Pandas API. We have merge functionality, uh, which will be 10 to, is testing in 10 to 100 times faster um, than, than Pandas. So uh, please, uh, please join him at that event. Um, he was happy for me to give him that plug. Um, I spoke to him earlier today. Um, and finally, uh, I just want to talk about the context interface. So um, the context interface uh, exposes uh, KDB's uh, accused context and namespaces. Um, so you can see here, I have my, um, I have an as of join, so it's in a fully Pythonic syntax. It can have Pythonic inputs. If there's a representative type for the input, so if the data frame, it will convert it to um, a, a, a PyKX table uh, and do the conversion, uh, and then you can just run your uh, as of join. Uh, so you know functionality that Q is designed for, obviously. Um, and the context interface can be extended. So here, using QMagic, I'm just going to drop into my own namespace, and I can create a function, and then I can call that function. So if you have, you know, a suite of, you know, a library of Q functionality that you want to expose uh, to your Python users within their, you know, research environment, you can do so, and they can call that seamlessly. Again, those can have Pythonic inputs if you want. Um, so the last thing I'll say is, you know, if if people are using PyKX already, that's great. We hope you continue to use the latest version. So uh, we love all the feedback we're getting so far um, and all the latest innovation. We'd love more feedback on that, like I said about the Pandas API. Um, and if you're not using PyKX, uh, please come talk to me or one of my colleagues, or you can do it later or down the pub, I don't mind, and we can get you set up and get using it. So um, with that, that's all I have. If anyone wants to ask any questions, I'll be happy to answer them.